Good afternoon. At midnight tonight, Australasian policing jurisdictions are going to unite to take action against the biggest factor that contributes to lives lost and serious injury crashes in Australia under a 24-hour national day of action. That contributing factor is distraction. In South Australia over the last five years we attribute 247 lives lost and 1,330 serious injury crashes directly to distraction. What you can expect to see is a highly visible national response to distraction. It will run across, as I said, Australasia and the focus of the operation will be enforcement. So I'd urge people to think about their responsibilities behind the wheel, to not be distracted from driving, to not think about distraction solely as a, a telephone or some sort of other device. Distraction can exist in a number of ways. It can be somebody that's not paying attention to the road changing a radio channel, it can be somebody adjusting the air conditioner, it could be somebody attending to a child in the back seat of the car. So just think about your driving, take responsibility, and please, let's have a 24-hour period where everybody remains safe on South Australian roads. Thank you, Superintendent Gray. Um, you've got one job when you're driving, and that's to get yourself and your passengers where you're going safely. Your job is also to make sure that your distraction doesn't lead to a road, a road death or a road injury from an innocent driver that gets caught up in your decision making. This next 24 hours is a very firm, overt, very deliberate approach from policing right across this country to remind everybody that being distracted and driving is not on. It shouldn't take National Road Week to remind people that the, one of the leading causes of road fatality and road trauma is being distracted. As Superintendent Gray mentioned, it's not just phones, it's, it's um, a whole suite of information that's available in your car. Um, the decision is yours. When you're driving, make it your job to get you and your passengers where you're going safely. Put your phone down, don't fiddle with the radio, shut out the white noise. One job, get where you're going safely. Superintendent, can you um, give us some idea of how physically that will happen with your patrol officers? Look, there'll be a raft of tactics that we'll use, and I won't go into those, but there'll be highly visible police on the roads. Um, there'll be overt and covert uh, police uh, and as I said the operation is focused on enforcement as the Minister has said we've we've come here we've done this we've, we're telling people what we're going to do it's no secret what we want out of this is a safe 24 hours on our roads. You talked about now this has become the biggest killer of people on the roads has it taken over from drink driving drug driving speeding has it taken over from that? Yeah over the last five years it's significantly overtaken everything else um, so as I said um, 247 lives lost in the last five years, 1,330 people seriously injured who've had a quality of life change, a lot of them, through an action that they could have uh, avoided and that we wouldn't have had the results. Can you give us a breakdown of the most serious? So is it on, being on the phone? Is it, as you say, fiddling with the radio dial? Is it uh, talking to someone in the back seat? Can you give us a breakdown of the most dangerous and the most lethal? Look, it's any, any activity that takes you away from focusing on driving is lethal potentially. So it, it, people genu genuinely think that it's just a phone, but it's, it's far from that. It's anything that distracts you from the task at hand, which is driving your vehicle or riding your motorbike or walking on the roadway or doing whatever you do to make sure that you get where you're going safely. So it's anything that, that detracts from that ability to get there safely is dangerous. Yeah, we, we, we always review our operations and determine what we can do better and what we can do differently to get a better and a safer outcome for the South Australian community. How much, of a, how much more difficult is this now that you not only have to deal with the speeders, the drunk drivers, the drunk drivers, but now the main focus is having to um, deal with people um, in their own cars and to watch what they're doing, so is it patrols you know, on, the, on the side streets watching people and to see if they're looking down on their phones. How, does, how will all that work? As I said, there'll be covert and overt um, police in this operation. Some you'll, you'll, you'll be highly visible, you'll see them. Um, 
and others uh, you won't know that they're police. So there'll be a whole raft of tactics that we will employ to keep people safe on our roads during this 24 hours. Uh, and clearly we target the fatal five, that is the five biggest contributors to serious injury crashes and lives lost on our roads. We do that 24 hours a day and every p uh, police officer in a police car does that because our aim is to keep the community safe, that's what we want. Do you have plainclothes police officers in cars looking? We will. Can we just um, have a chat now in relation to the double fatal, just very quickly. Um, is it possible that someone going at 60 k's an hour could cause that much carnage in that crash? Yes, it is. Can you, can you talk us through that? Look, um, the investigation into that collision, and it's a tragic collision, and my heart goes out to the two families involved. And what I will say is that since the 15th of May, we've lost three lives on our roads and they've all been under 18 years. And I think it's a, an important reminder that the age demographic between 16 and 24 are vulnerable road users. Currently, we have 30 lives lost on our roads. Nine of those people are in that age demographic. So what I'm asking is for parents to have the discussions with the, their loved ones, talk to them about the realities of what can go wrong when you're using the road network if you're not responsible, you're not paying attention, or you know, driving to the conditions. Just have the discussion with the people that you love. And I'd ask people watching this to think about the loved ones that they may leave behind. How, how do you get through to young people as to how dangerous it is on the road and how they need to abide by the road? Look, we can, we can educate and we can enforce, but as I said, I'm asking people to have the discussions with their loved ones before something tragic does happen. Sit down and talk about the, the dangers and the realities of using our road if you're not driving appropriately or if you are distracted uh, or if, if you make bad decisions. Is it possible that um, a distraction, distraction was involved in that double fatality? Oh, I don't think it was distraction in relation to that. Was it speed? Doesn't it look? It's very, very early in the investigation. What I would say is speed could be a contributing factor, but it doesn't look like it was excessively speed. So what I'm saying is, on initial investigations, it looks like that there, there was not a high speed involved in the collision. So even at 60 k's, even doing the speed limit, you can kill yourself doing even the speed limit. That's how dangerous it is on the roads. Most definitely, you can. Um, a train has hit a pedestrian at Alberton. Do you have any details on that? I'm not aware of that. Um, and there's been a plane incident in over Lake Eyre. Do you have any comments? No, I'm not aware of that either. Last questions, please. There was also a car against a physio studio today in Prospect. I believe the person fled. Do you have any messages to people that flee from scenes after things like that? No, is that right? <clears throat> a, I'm not aware of it. B, uh, it's an inhumane act. If you are involved in a collision, then, and you think that somebody's been affected, which potentially driving into a building, you would expect that could be a possibility. Uh, the law requires you to remain at the scene and render assistance. Um, so um, it's just an act that people shouldn't even be considering. With that train and pedestrian incident, do you have any safety messages for people that might be walking close to train lines, even though you don't have the incident at this stage? As I said, I have no knowledge of that incident, but clearly, um, People are vulnerable. Pedestrians are a vulnerable group of road users, and if you are working, are walking near a train track, then you've got to be aware of your circumstances and your surroundings and make sure that you behave appropriately. Just getting back to the distraction element, um, is using the phone the most dangerous or has the highest rate of um, accidents that you're aware of with your phone? It's certainly, as I said, any distraction, any activity that distracts you from driving is dangerous. So we don't rank them. Um, people just associate distraction with the phone and it's far broader than that. What, what can you describe other, some other things other than the phone and switching the radio? What other things? Well, look, people, people read up magazines, people um, put makeup on when they're driving along, people uh, pick up, try and pick things up from the floor, people do all sorts of things without really averting the, their mind to the act and how dangerous what they're doing potentially is, not just to themselves but to other road users. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thanks.